lot of things we can do in this world. But what do we do with God's promise, God's daring choice of vulnerable love over violence? How do we walk with this in our daily lives? What do we do when we are the object of the verb rather than the subject? How can we sit in relationship with so much passivity? One of my favorite things to read is a blog by two Southern Episcopal priests who are also young women. Their blog, soon to be book, is called, forgive me, Dirty Sexy Ministry, and is subtitled, Two Priests with a Feminine Outlook on the World. After all, celebrating the Eucharist with a slipping bra strap adds perspective. (laughs) Their most recent post was entitled, Being Moved. One of the priests recently accepted a new call in a different town, and she writes literally as she is being moved by movers who are packing up her life into boxes, her things into boxes, and taking her things to her new home. She writes this. Are you okay? The head mover Travis asked. Yes, I said politely. Just not used to sitting around and doing nothing. So I called a few friends, paced around for a bit, walked outside, and fell into a routine fight with an acquaintance via text messages. Nothing like those in our lives who will push our buttons just right. But at least, my shadow side noted, you are doing something. Until I remembered about being moved. We like activities in our lives. Doing something to solve this problem. Actively praying to seek that answer. Engaging in anything that will fill those quiet spaces in our lives until we are absolutely sure what we should do next. Except that what we should do next is usually something that puts us in total control, complete certainty, and lets our egos shout, I rule. Sometimes, even most times, however, she writes... God, who loves us, implores us to submit to being moved, to sit and simply make ourselves available, to sit while God prepares the space, to be willing to enter the unknown without expectations or agendas. So, she writes, I just sat while the movers did their job. I still had lots of silent thoughts, so I wasn't all that passive. I did think, however, about being moved. How, in this last year, God invited this rather unwilling pilgrim on a deep spiritual journey, and how much of that journey was filled with moments of complete passivity and surrender, where I implored God to let me be active, and God said, no, just sit. What do we do when we can't do anything? When God is making a new thing happen entirely without our help. Personally, I wish that I could give you some flashy answer, some concrete information, maybe even three easy steps for simple Christian living. But we know floods. We know the complexities of life. And it's never that simple. Let me instead suggest this. What if we practiced waiting sitting, opening ourselves to God, who is with us at all times and promises not to let us go. The holiday season is quickly approaching. In two weeks, we'll begin Advent here at church, which is a time of preparation and waiting. What do we do when we can't do anything because God is making a new thing happen without our help? One woman I know said, For relentless activists like me, learning to sit and allow God to love me through my family, friends, and congregation will be discipline enough. Life is complicated and we know floods. But from this story today, we also know that God is a relational God, meeting us where we are, loving us as we are. Why does this matter? 
Because sometimes we can't do anything to solve a problem. And sometimes we can't even hold on to faith. People fail us, torrents rush, and sometimes we don't have any rock to cling to. Sometimes we are pushed so fully into a painful reality that we, can, we can't trust anything in life, even God. That is when God's promise of love breaks into our lives. God will see the bow in the clouds and remember. We know floods, but God knows us. Even when we can't be faithful, God will be hanging on to hope and promising to love us always. Amen.